back, legs, and arms were sore after carrying boxes to the attic and basement, but he finished before Aunt Contunia came home. Vernon Dursley had given him a tuna sandwich his wife had prepared earlier. It was actually a bountiful feast for a change. Dudley often stole food from Perry's plate if he didn't eat it fast enough, and the Dursleys led him, always commenting that Dudley was a growing boy that needed the extra nourishment. If Dudley got any more well-nourished, Harry expected him to explode. At nine years old, he already had three chins and weighed more than his own mother. The Dursleys saw him as brawny, and they thought Harry was a measly weakling. But they never considered that he was a growing boy, too, when Dudley took his food. Unfortunately, Harry couldn't appreciate the meal or the piece he could eat it in. He hated tuna fish. He still finished the sandwich because he had to get food when he could, or he was certain he would starve to death otherwise. However, Uncle Vernon had locked him in the cupboard afterwards, not letting him wa waste toothpaste and brushing his teeth in the afternoon. The smell of the tuna was still heavy on his breath, and the fumes traveled up into his nose. As expected, Aunt Petunia and Dudley arrived home with arms filled with packages, all additional presents for Dudley's, aside from the ones hidden in the storage room. Harry was not trusted to carry these, for the Dursleys suspected he would intentionally drop them. Some of them were quite expensive. Harry peered through the vent, which was open for a change, to see Dudley playing with a remote control car. His mother's face twitched. She was worried he would run the car into something and break it. But the reprimand never made it to her lips. Dudley was a sensitive soul, according to his parents, and he took everything to heart. And so they never yelled at him. Harry laid down on his bed with a disgusted sigh. He heard Dudley go up the stairs to put away his packages before dinner. The heavy footfall stopped in the middle and jumped a few times on the step, knowing full well that it caused dust to rain on Harry. Harry tried not to cough, but it was impossible. Dudley, when he heard his cousin coughing, smiled wickedly. The aroma of dinner smelled heavenly, and Harry knew they were having his favorites. Aunt Petunia was a good cook, and it always seemed they served his favorites when he wasn't allowed to have ser a serving of the evening meal. By now, Harry suspected it wasn't a coincidence. His stomach growled. He crossed his arms to try to make the hunger pangs go away. The family watched TV, Dudley went to bed, but not before raining more dust on Harry, who had a sneezing fit. His eyes were now red from the two assaults, and rubbing them only made them worse. When he asked to be allowed to use the restroom, Aunt Petunia closed the vent. The cupboard, without the ventilation, started to get hot. Harry felt sticky and uncomfortable. His throat was sore from thirst, and his hunger pain seemed to get worse. The dust Dursleys went to bed and the house was quiet. Harry couldn't sleep. He was actually exhausted from the day's labor, but he was too uncomfortable to fall asleep. Suddenly he heard footsteps coming down the stairs, but he didn't recognize them. Though he couldn't see them, he always knew which member of the family was coming down the stairs, for they all had their distinct ways of walking. The footsteps came down the stairs slowly. They paused and they passed in front of the cupboard and suddenly Harry heard the vent open. Harry remembered the little ghost girl that appeared to him the other night and wondered if it was her, but the footsteps seemed too heavy for a little girl. Heart pounding, Harry gulped and slowly rose up to look outside the vent. At first he didn't see anything except the silhouette of the furniture in the living room. The outside light shone through the, a slit in the closed drapes. Then abruptly a horrible face came into view. It seemed to belong to a man. He had long, greasy hair. His face was a mottled white. There was two small eyes that glowed red, set in, into the black rings of the sockets. The nose looked human enough, but the chin seemed too long and sharp. The mouth looked sealed. Harry yelped and jumped back, hitting his head on the board. He didn't register the pain. He panted, shaken in here, fear. Who was the intruder? Was it a murderer that bro had broken into the house? Then it occurred to him that it might be Dudley wearing a mask, though it seemed too tall and too thin to be Dudley. Then again, he didn't really get that good of a look. Taking a shaky breath, he got up as quietly as he could to look out the vent. He didn't see anything. Swallowing hard, he managed to call out, Hello? Dudley? Is that you? No, 
No one answered. After a minute, Harry sighed and laid back down. That was when he heard the cupboard being unlocked. His heart rate quickened once again and he held his breath. He was expecting someone to open the door and kill him. He expected the last thing he'd see before he died would be that awful face. However, no one opened the door. Once again, Harry shakily got up and looked out the vent. He saw no one, but when he pressed against the door, it, was, it opened. He cautiously stepped out and looked around. There was nobody there. Though he feared getting caught by the Dursleys, the freedom to move about was too alluring. As he, quietly as he could, he tiptoed to the bathroom to get his toothbrush. He wasn't going to use the faucet in there, for the Dursleys could hear that. He would use the one in the kitchen. In the kitchen, he satisfied his thirst and brushed his teeth, getting rid of the horrible tuna fish breath. Then he went to the fridge to see if there were any leftovers. The pie was tempting, but there was only one piece left, and that would be missed. However, Harry stuck his finger in to taste the filling. There, was a, there were some ham slices, enough that Harry felt safe in taking two, and some mashed potatoes. He ate leftovers cold, not daring to use the microwave to warm them up since it made a loud beeping sound that might wake up the family sleeping upstairs. Still, it was the most delicious thing Harry could remember eating. He didn't use plates, worrying both about the noise and not wanting to leave evidence in dirt, dirty dishes. And Petunia was an immaculate housekeeper and never left dirty dishes sitting in the sink. Giddy with freedom, Harry searched the refrigerator for more food. Seeing the milk, he opened it and drank directly from the container. Then he remembered the cookie jar on the counter. Grinning, he went over to it, confident that Aunt Petunia always kept it well stocked for her darling Dudley. He could take a few without it being noticed, and the Dursleys wouldn't be the wiser since they expected him to be locked in the cupboard. Harry paused, a thought occurring to him that made his heart clench in fear. He couldn't lock the cup cupboard. They might see that it is unlocked. Would they assume they had forgotten to secure it, or would they blame it on him and suspect he had gotten out? They wouldn't believe the story about the man with the strange face unless they saw him for, him for themselves. Frankly, Harry was beginning to wonder if he was seeing things. First the little girl and then the man, and both seemed to disappear into thin air. Was the house haunted, or was he going crazy? Harry shrugged and went over to the cookie jar. If he was going to be punished anyway, he might as well enjoy himself now. He might just have that last piece of pie, too. Might give him some spiteful pleasure in knowing that he had deprived Dudley of it. He closed his eyes, relishing the sweetness of the cookies. He heard a giggle behind him, and he jumped with a start. Behind him was the little girl who had appeared to him before. She was still wearing the raincoat. Hello, he whispered. She smiled. Do you want a cookie? He held out one to her, but she shook her head. How did you get in here? Once again, she put a finger to her lips and went, shh. Then she beckoned him to follow her. He looked up at the stairs to make sure the Dursleys hadn't stirred as he left the kitchen. He followed the little girl who led him to the basement. She went down the steps and he followed carefully, the basement being darker at night. Down in the basement, he was surprised to see another girl tacking a sheet up on the wall. The projector had been set up. Nicole, go close the door so those horrible people can't hear us, the girl ordered. The girl in the raincoat smiled at Harry as she went up the stairs to close the door. Meanwhile, the other girl finished hanging up the sheet and turned to Harry with a gentle smile. Hello, I'm Emma, and that is Nicole. Nicole was now standing behind Harry, grinning at him. Nice uh, to meet you, Harry said. Are you friends of the Dursleys? Emma's eyes widened in surprise. Good heavens, no, we're here for you. Harry gulped a bit nervously. For, for me? Why? Nicole and Emma looked at each other. Then Emma replied, our guardian is interested in adopting you. Harry's heart quickened, but this time in a good way. Really? He wants to adopt me? Yes, Emma smiled assuredly which was backed up by Nicole's vigorous nod. Who is your guardian? Harry asked. You saw him earlier, Emma said. Harry's stomach plummeted. The man in the mask? It isn't a mask, Emma replied, though I can see why you thought so. 